Okay, uh, take a moment to talk about the Delta attack on Alaska here in Seattle, and then Alaska's response not only here in Seattle, but they're now going into their Salt Lake City hub uh, with some spoke uh, service. Is, is that a particularly effective retaliation, or is that just sending a message? So um, we do have lots of new competition with Delta. Delta is a 20-year partner of ours, something like that. Now I think um, what I, I think what happened there is Delta decided that they they saw big growth opportunities internationally out of Seattle. And I think just some of the background is that they wanted us to be a lot more exclusive with Delta. As you know, we have partnerships with Delta and American and with 12 or 14 other international airlines. And we were worried about that, just candidly. We were worried about if we began to close up those other partnerships over time. Scott, you might have said, I love Alaska. It's my favorite airline, but there's no reason for me to have the Alaska Airlines credit card or be in the Alaska Airlines miles plan. They really just kind of, a, they just really just fly on behalf of one of these other airlines. So we were, we were happy with our policy or our, our uh, strategy of partnering with many airlines and bringing you all of that value if you were in our program. And I think Delta wasn't. And, uh, and so that, that's pro probably as simple as, as we can say it. I will say that we have a lot of, I, I don't know that the last nail is in this coffin or not. They're, they're a good airline, they're, and we have a lot of respect for those folks. But I also, I mean, what I, I want, I want the last, I meant to say this in my talk, my main thing, and I think all of us in Alaska feel this way, is we want Alaska to be a strong, independent, Seattle-based company. That, that's what we're about, and I think if we begin to lose that, it's I worry about it. And there's, we have 6,500 jobs in this area. We have, if we weren't an independent Seattle company, at least 2,000 of those good jobs, finance people, um, accountants, computer programmers, HR people, management folks, those jobs disappear. So we, we just we're we're working hard to keep the company strong and keep it independent. The Salt Lake City strategy specifically. I mean, the easiest way to say that is that. Nationally, the industry is doing quite well because supply and demand are in balance. There's, given, given the market sizes, given the number of people flying between cities, the number of seats that we as airlines are putting in the market is appropriate. On the West Coast, that's not true. On the West Coast, we've had something like 69 new flights added in the last 12 months. There's, there's a lot of capacity. So Salt Lake City was nothing more than us trying in a, in a very minor uh, way to sort of rebalance capacity a little bit. Okay, and then as a follow-up to that, um, you mentioned the last, of course, being an independent, independent carrier. Uh, with the uh, mergers and acquisitions that have gone on, what protections as a public company do you have from um, a friendly takeover or a hostile takeover? You know, the, um, I actually, so I'll, I'll just, this is a small world. I, there, there was an Aerospace Futures Alliance meeting a while ago. Some of you guys go to that. Uh, it was at Comcast Center. Pat Shanahan from Boeing spoke, and he quoted uh, Virginia or Jenny Rometty, the lady that runs IBM, and she said the best defense is performance, and that's what I, I actually wrote all, our 13,000 people an email. And I told them that the best defense is performance. If we're taking care of you, if we're safe, if we're on time, if we have low fares, if we're taking care of our employees, of our employees and unions and all that, say. I'm better off being as part, part of this company than part of another company. I think you go a long, long way. I, I, I'll just say if we're not performing, we're in trouble in terms of controlling our destiny. So we need to perform. There are little things uh, from a corporate, go corporate governance perspective that, that might give you a shot. Uh, but I'll just say in general with the way sort of corporate governance reform has happened in the last few years, there's a lot less of that than there used to be. So. 99% oh, of my energy on this is on Alaska Air Group performing. And, and honestly, our investors should be really happy. I was a CFO for a long time. And we'd go back to New York and we'd just say, look, you, you owning a share of ALK has been better than you owning a share of any other company. As long as we can look them in the eye and say that, I think we're, I think we're going to be okay. Uh, yes, sir. William Polsak with Singularity Prime. Um, since there are a lot of suppliers and parts companies um, here, 
But what do you see as some of the challenges that you're looking for help in your operations, you know, um, especially with uh, ground support um, and MRO? Yeah. yeah it's, it's a great question. Um, I was trying to think about that. I mean, the, the you know, well, one thing, I'll, here's, here's maybe something. Like, the 737 is a phenomenal airplane. It's, it's just phenomenal. You put the engines on these things, they fly for seven, eight, nine years before you do anything with them. The airplane has a tremendous sort of in-service sort of record. But that's, that, from my perspective, that's the biggest thing you can do is keep us safe, keep us reliable, keep us on time with the way, with the way you're supporting us. The quality of the parts needs to be really good. When there's an issue, I mean, the, the things that I would hear about is that we've got a certain number of components off of the vendor being repaired. We're slow getting them back or something like that. That, that stuff matters a lot. The price point to us is important. I mean, it probably is most important when it's reflected through Boeing in the, in the price of an airplane. Because our big, and I didn't talk a ton about this, our, our big metric that we are after above, above all, else, all else is return on invested capital. And return on is all of the things we do between fares and buying fuel and employees and all of that. Invested capital are the checks we write to Boeing and Bombardier. And so it, it, the, the purchase price of these airplanes is important. But I guess for a certain, from an in-service perspective, just keep us reliable, keep us safe, keep us on time. That, is, it, is that helpful? I'll, I'll keep thinking. Maybe I can do better as the day, as the afternoon goes on. Uh, Brad Lawrence. Yeah, Brad, you know, people in this room are very interested in, in, uh, in Alaska and the other airlines being successful because that helps make us successful and creates demand for Boeing aircraft. So one of the factors in this super cycle that we're in has been the fact that the airlines are profitable yeah. and they've been behaving. They've been not adding uh, not right. capacity too fast, but they've done in the past. And they've uh, reached tacit agreements on territories that they fly to. We see this move now by Delta. Is this, is this a one-off, or do you see yeah. the bad old days coming back? Yeah. I think it's a, it's a very fair question. And I, don't, I can't speak for them, and I don't know the answer to your question, Brad. Um, but I do, I do think one of the, the uh, I'll say from the, from the financial community on the airline side, the analysts, are, a lot of them are sort of, and they're asking of, of, of all airlines, but they, they're really interested in seeing what we call capacity discipline. They don't want to see people getting too full of themselves and growing too rapidly, because that started, you know, the last three cycles, that's been the, the beginning of the problem. Um, so I, I don't, I don't it, it, I'll, I'll just say I think it's a great question, but I don't know the answer. I will say that the thinking inside a lot of these airlines has changed. It's, the, if you go back 20, 30 years, I mean, it, if, if an airline leader came to talk to a group like this, they'd say, we want to fly to London, we want to fly to Charles de Gaulle, we want to fly to Beijing, we want to fly to all 50 capitals of the United States. But now, they don't, that's not, they, you're right. If you look at the airlines, even these three largest airlines, they sort of, they sort of, they're strong in different parts of the country, and you don't see super aggressive uh, actions with them taking each other on. But um, I think you're asking a great question. Uh, by the way, it's one of the things we sort of leave at last, because sometimes the question's better than the answer, more important than the answer. It's like, that might be one we all just sort of let sit for a couple of years, and, and uh, rather than me giving you too good of an answer right now. Just so everybody knows, Brad Lawrence has been a great friend of Alaska Airlines and a great friend of everyone in Seattle. Uh, he and I and several others worked together to sort of uh, help get the Aviation High School built, and you, you uh, came to that table. Came to that table in a big way. Yes. I'm hoping you could elaborate a little bit more on Proposition One and the company's opposition. Um, from what I know, talking to analysts, Alaska is really known for good labor relations, and you have reached these deals with your pilots and your flight attendants. And uh, analysts have said that it shouldn't probably have that big of a financial impact. So why are you fighting so much? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, here's our, our point is that it's a blunt instrument. Our point isn't that I think income equality, there's a problem. I, I sort of think the way I think of it is the rungs on the economic ladder. If you start on the ramp or it's a fueler, can you make it to become a, a mechanic or and sort of move your way up? That needs help. We need to help get people into training programs and help move them along. The, um, 
and this, this, our thinking has probably evolved on this a little bit, but if you say $15 an hour is the new base, and if that's the base regardless of benefits, and like a company like in Alaska might get benefits that are worth five bucks an hour or something like that, but that doesn't matter, $15 an hour is the base. We have, I mean, I'm, I'll just tell you, I'm very proud of Alaska's record with labor. We, our jobs are, we're, we're a three and a half percent airline, but if you look at us, we, we pay well compared to the biggest airlines, by well, second, third, fourth best in the industry. But a customer service agent position might start at $11 an hour. At Horizon, they've got several scales where you would get $15. We pay benefits, uh, and others don't, but you might not get to $15 until the eighth step. Another element of Proposition 1 is that nobody could be offered part-time work until everyone before had been offered full-time work. And in our industry, it's in our industry, not only us, the people driving, working at hotels and restaurants and driving vans, a lot the, the demand is not 40-hour-a-day demand. So that was one of our concerns. If you think about how this plays out, like in Alaska, we've got lots of folks at SeaTac that that's the floor, and then to sort of create, and I, I don't think it necessarily would do this, but it's, it's part of what we thought over the times over the deal. But if $15 is, an, is the new floor, then what does the CSA need to make? And what does the customer service agent supervisor need to make? How many jobs have to be changed to sort of restore equity in the pay system? And that was a super, super scary number for us. So our, our real position is has been that we're not against the conversation. We're not, in our, our what we really said is let's not, I, I, we're, we have, as, as these, uh, we've got threats to us right now is to our independence to being a Seattle-based company. So let's do something that can help Seattle-based companies win and, and also helps fix, repair some of those rungs on the ladder and helps with income, income equality. That, that was just too much and too set.